Hey gang, it's kind of a gray rainy day here in St. Louis and I'm at a cemetery called Laurel Hill Memorial Gardens and we're here to see and pay respects to the grave of a little girl that was killed many, many years ago. And I'll tell you what drew me to come here to this cemetery to see Angie's grave is the horrendous, you know, I thought I've, I thought really I've heard everything as we tell these stories that are, they just seem to be more and more terrible. And you think to yourself, how, how can it even get any worse than the previous story that you just heard? Yet, I think this one, when I heard this story, it really made me angry, sad, a lot of mixed emotions. But one emotion that I had, I, I just heard about this a couple of weeks ago, it just happened to come up, something I was watching, and it, it made me really want to make this drive all the way down here to pay respects and tell the story. Tell the story of little nine-year-old Angie Hausman. It is unbelievable. There, she was abducted. It, it, was, it was actually right from her home. She lived on Wright Avenue uh, in St. Anne, Missouri. She was living with her mother, her stepfather, and her younger brother. She had just gotten off school and was on her way home on the school bus. No one ever saw her again when she got off the school bus. You have to wonder how no one saw her literally just disappear. Of course, right after that, in kicked the efforts of the police. There was all kinds of massive searching going on immediately. I mean, it was, a, it was an amazing response. But there was, there was just no, there were no leads. It was, it was just cold almost as soon as it started, sadly. Well, it was nine days later, they had a deer hunter found her body. He was hunting in the Bush Wildlife area in St. Charles County. He found her in the most horrific of ways. You couldn't even imagine what this poor guy had to witness as he walked up to this tree. He was wondering, what was that? She was duct taped to the tree, and the first thing that he noticed is that her eyes were duct taped, her mouth was duct taped, and she looked like she was frozen. Again, this happened in late November, just after Thanksgiving, which is when deer hunting happens, or she probably wouldn't have been found all winter. She was starved, handcuffed, raped. And the authorities, after they did the autopsy, they believe that she had just died within mere hours before she was found. After nine days. Well, as you will hear, the cards were really stacked up against Angie that day, that month, that year. It was, it was just terrible fate. Now we skip ahead to a couple of years ago. Literally, June 5th, 2019, 26 years or so after her body was found, 
Her killer was finally identified as 61-year-old Earl Cox. And it was through the latest techniques in DNA, a lot of the stuff we're hearing lately, DNA forensics. And they had a, what was a corrupted, dirty sample taken from the trim of her underwear of semen. And science has caught up that they could distill a DNA profile. And they went to CODIS, and there he was, sitting in jail. Why was he sitting in jail? He was sitting in jail because he, was a, he is a pedophile. And he was arrested for previous crime, which included, by the way, over 45,000 pictures found on his computer of kids naked. So CODIS, CODIS did the trick. It was three girls, when the name came up, came forward, and then the, the, all the people started telling the scary stories about this guy. These girls were talking about when they worked for him many, many years ago when they were young teenagers and getting tackled in his living room and assaulted and all that creepy stuff. Well, this guy pleaded guilty and he took this Alford ruling you've probably heard about, which means you're not admitting your guilt, but you're pleading guilty. Some stupid law. And then he stood there in court and he told everybody all the details with the family sitting right there without any emotion, how he tortured her at his home and then left her to die in the woods. Just imagine what her death was like. He had her in his home and tortured her for maybe two or three days. And the remaining days, all those days, she had to stand there tied to a tree with her eyes covered and her mouth covered, freezing to death. Slowly freezing to death. How can anyone do that to another human being, let alone a small child, a small girl like that? It's the devil. Well, he received life in prison with no parole. Big deal. If there was ever a death sentence that should be handed down on someone, this is, this is the man that should get it. But no, he's going to get to live his remaining years in prison, getting his three square meals a day. We're at the grave now of Angie and the other there are other family members here I'm gonna walk between these two graves here and we'll have a look at her tombstone gravestone very dirty unfortunately no flowers I understand her mom had passed away. I'm not sure, I don't think she got to see justice done. I believe her mom, I'm gonna take a guess, was Diane, who died in 2016. I may be wrong, guys, but we'll, maybe in comments you guys can chime in. I'm going to walk over here and there's a Richard Hausman here. Passed away in 1991. He was born in 1973 and I'm going to take a stab that was her brother. Didn't even make it through his teens. 
He was born in 73, Angie was born in 84, so I'm not sure about that, but really sad story here. Just unimaginable. It's a beautiful gravestone. There's a swan. There is a little girl, little angel it looks like. Well, ironically, and when I say things were stacked against poor Angie, neighbors usually watch the bus stop, and not just one, but multiple neighbors. And on that day, there were distractions, unfortunately. One of the neighbors who usually stands guard at her window at the time, and she used to watch the children get off the bus but she just didn't happen to do it that day. And another neighbor, another neighbor who also watched the drop-offs from her front porch was away taking care of her sick father. It's sad because it was also reported that the police might have been closer to identifying the killer than they knew. He had connections to the area, this Cox guy. All these previous child molestations, convictions and arrests, you have to wonder where the disconnect was and even four years after Angie's murder the FBI put together a, a list of sex offenders and his name was on it but he was never questioned yeah fate fate was against Angie but you know they never gave up and you do have to credit the police in the end I mean they tried these guys took it personally I watched a lot of the news footage and these guys, they really, they took it home. And the new police chief came in and the old police chief said, please don't forget about this case. Well, they didn't. They, they finally, science caught up with this guy and, you know, just like these other cases that we're hearing about. So at least he's not going to be on the street anymore. But, well, Angie... Angie Hausman, Angie, we hope you're resting in peace. I'm going to say you got justice, but I think his ultimate justice, the ultimate justice will come, I hope, in the next world. So rest in peace, Angie. Signing out.